All right, here we have <clears throat> a small radio that I picked up at one of the club auctions. <clears throat> it's in bad shape. It's not original. <clears throat> the box is a DeForest a DT700, but this radio is not a DeForest DT700. So somebody used the box to build their home belt in. Um, all right, so we're going to go ahead and make it into a beautiful radio, even though it isn't original. It'll never be worth more than well, maybe a couple hundred dollars at the most. Um, the box itself has got some damage to it, nothing serious. It's easy to fix. Okay, the radio. Okay, it's a two tubes. It uses two tubes that are uh, like an 01A. <clears throat> got two condensers and got damage to it. Um, this is a reflex radio. Um, it's got a crystal detector right here which is missing the little cup with the crystal in it and the, the cat whiskers kind of winky dink. We'll have to fix that. No problem. It's no problem to fix that. Um, <coughs> front panel needs the whole nine yards done to it. Um, all right. Tuning condensers, aha, no shorts on these like on the other uh, radio we just did. Okay, now we've got two very collectible audio transformers in this one. These are kind of rare and there's one thing about them, you almost never find these that are good. Um, I've had about a dozen of them in my history of doing radios and I've never found a single one of them that was completely good. Okay, all right, we've got continuity on the primary, zilch on the secondary. Okay, over here, we got continuity on the primary. Come on, be good. Nothing, zilch. So both of them are burned out on the secondary. The secondary is the one that has the large number of turns for the grid. All right, we'll get those things out of there and um, we'll see what we have to do to repair them. All right, they're neat little transformers, but um, they were made back in the day when the wire was very, very uh, poor quality, the fine wire. They, uh, they didn't know how to properly draw the uh, fine wire. Okay, so the first thing we have to do, we've got to have these transformers working before we can do any work on the rest of it. Now, the way you repair these things, the first thing you do is you press the transformer itself out of the sleeve. Okay, we just take it and we, we put the edges of the sleeve directly on the vise and then we just take a, a like a block of wood and we just tamp on it and it'll just drive it right out of there. It's just put in there by, by the pressure of the wires just holding out there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the vise to where it just catches the, the outer case but not, not the uh, inner core. Okay, it's just the right size and I'm just going to tamp it down. See how that came out of there? See, and that's the uh, housing. Okay, that's the easy part. Okay, now the next thing we have to do is remove all the core wires. This is no fun, no fun whatsoever. One, two, three. <laughs> Uh, we could do a quick and dirty repair on the radio by using 
one of the little replacement transformers from the, the antique electronics supply. We could just reuse those to replace these. But the radio would not be as nice. Uh, and not only that, these transformers are too valuable to just throw away. All right, it's been about 20 minutes. <laughs> Whew. Okay, there's the mess. I'm going to do it all again. Alright. Now, let's see if we can get this covering off of here. The, the, the corn form is very nicely made, and since it's round, it's easy to wind. But, um, and I'm pretty sure that the secondary is on the outside, so we only have to rip off one uh, layer of wire. We'll save that. Okay. Okay. And these are our two connections to the secondary right here. Okay. Okay, we got our coil winding machine. Alright, I got some number 40 wire. That's all I've got. I've got some number 44, but I don't have enough to wind it. It's, I've only got a, a small spool of number 44, so I'm going to use this number 40. Won't get as many turns on it, but the transformer is not that critical. Now we got nice clean roll wire with one end coming off of it. Here we go.
All right, that looks good. Okay. Okay. Now the first thing I'm going to do before I put some put some glue on here is I'm going to test it, make sure the winding is good. Sometimes it'll break down inside while we're doing this. It's not not likely, but it could happen. There we go. All right, we're in good shape. Got 2,000 ohms. It is. I'm just going to put that piece of tape right over it. It's a little too long. Okay. All of the work is done. It took about three hours to straighten all these out, get them ready to go. Got them all straightened out again, and uh, just uh, amazingly, I mean, they're pretty much going in there. It's about half inch longer than the old one. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. What would be really hilarious is if now one of the windings was open. <laughs> open. All the work for nothing. Okay. Uh, all the work for nothing, okay? Trash can. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to trash them. Uh, I'm not going to bother with them. They are unsalvageable. I, I, it, well, there's a certain point which you say hell with it. Since we can't use those little hedgehogs, we're going to use some cheapo transformers. These are modern to hide them and make it look a little bit more authentic. I've made little metal boxes that will fit over them and that makes it look a little bit more like what they did back in the old days. Okay, that will do for the transformers. Okay, I've got everything removed. This knob is frozen onto the shaft, so I can't do it. We'll have to clean it while it's on there. 
Okay, the rest of it I've got removed and we're going to clean the panel and spray it make it look beautiful. And then we can put the parts back on there. We'll clean these knobs, make them look good, and um, that will make the whole uh, front end look good. Then we're going to get busy and start wiring. Okay, all I'm doing is taking um, some coarse steel wool and just buffing off the the front of the panel. There's just, just dirt and dust and stuff and you just take that and get it off of there. Okay, that'll do okay. Okay, now I want those to have lacquer on them, but I don't want it to go in the hole, so I'm going to get a couple of bolts to stick in there, and that'll do that. Now the knob I don't want lacquer on. Alright, now before we spray, I'm going to wipe it down with um, lacquer thinner to clear any last traces of grease off of it. dirt. Okay. All right, now we let that dry for an hour or two, and that will do it. Okay, here we have the box. Okay, we're coming apart at the seams. Okay, so all of this is going to just be glued up. Then we'll strip everything off of it down to bare wood. The finish is totally uh, crumbling. It, it just, it, it just, is, there's no way. See, it's just... Uh, no finish there. The finish that's on there just comes right off. Um, okay, the hardware, we'll pull the hardware off and we'll paint it, make it look nice. But the first thing to do is to glue the box and get it clamped.
of the areas that are broken out of there, I'm going to just going to put filler in. Okay, this looks very good. We'll let that harden for an hour or two and then do the other side. picture. All right, this is all hardened. Pull this off of here. Okay, that is in good shape. Cracks, cracks. Okay, and then over here, crack, crack. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up filler and I'm going to go ahead and fill those cracks. I got the filler here and we're just going to slop that into there. This radio is going in my collection, so I want to make it halfway decent. Okay, to wire the radio, we use uh, number 14 bus wire. Okay, and we're going to need it straight. So what we do to straighten it, we clamp it in the vise and stretch it out like so. All right, and I'm just going to pull really hard. Okay, and the wire is now very straight. And if I'm very careful not to screw it up, it will stay straight. Okay, I'm going to cut it off. That gives us a nice piece of straight bus wire to use for wiring the radio. Okay, before we start wiring, I'm going to go ahead and show you the circuit. Okay, it's, it's called a double reflex circuit. What it does is it reflexes the uh, signal back through and uses each tube twice. So we get, with two tubes, we get the equivalent performance of four tubes. All right, let's see how that works. All right, let's forget this down here first. And we see our first stage. We couple the antenna into the tune circuit, and then the tune circuit to the grid, and then the plate to the second stage transformer. Okay, the second tune circuit. Forget that for the time being. And the second tune circuit is coupled to the grid. Okay, that gives us two radio frequency amplifiers. Okay, the plate load on the second stage is just a choke, an RF choke. All right, and it goes back and gets up to B plus in the end. Now, where does the reflexing come in? Okay, up to this point here, we have modulated RF. Okay, what we want to do is separate out the modulation. So we use a small value capacitor that will pass the RF, but not pass audio. This 001 capacitor has very high reactance at audio frequencies, so we're not going to pass significant audio through it. But the RF at 1 megahertz or 500 kilohertz up to 1.5 megahertz passes through it easily. Okay, that goes to the cat whisker rectifier, which uh, rectifies the signal and leaves the modulation. Now the modulation goes into the primary of our audio transformer. We use a, a, a filter capacitor to get rid of the RF. Again, this one has high reactance at audio, but low reactance at radio frequency. So the, the 
the radio frequency part of the signal is gotten rid of, leaving only the audio on the primary of the transformer. Okay, that feeds through to the secondary. We have a, a one to three tr transformer, so it increases the amplitude by about three times. Okay, we have another capacitor. This one is used to take the, the ground end of the tune circuit, and for RF, it puts it to ground. But the 002, again, has very high reactance at audio, so it does not affect the signal that's appearing on the audio transformer. Okay, so the audio transformer now is fed through this winding here. Since this is an RF transformer, it has very low reactance at audio frequencies, and that gets to the grid. So we now are taking our audio signal, and we're feeding it onto the grid of the tube where it's amplified. Now, we have audio appearing on the plate, but since this is a very high reactance, it does not feed through into the detector. It, instead, it passes through the choke. This is a radio frequency choke, so it has very low reactance at audio frequencies. It has high reactance at RF, which is what we want, and low reactance at audio frequencies. So it passes through, comes back around, and is connected to the primary of our second audio transformer. Okay, and then through there to B+. Plus. Okay, that supplies B+, plus to the uh, second two. All right, we get our audio signal here that's been amplified one time already by the first two. Okay, the secondary of our second transformer, we have one half to ground, the other half, same as in the other one, we feed it to the bottom of the tune circuit, and since this is an RF tune circuit, it has very low reactance at audio frequency, so the audio signal is fed to the plate of the tube. I mean, the, the grid of the tube, sorry. Okay, the bottom of the uh, tune circuit has a, a low value capacitor that has very high reactance at audio, so it does not affect our signal coming off of the transformer, the audio signal, but it, it allows the RF signal on the bottom here to be grounded, which is what we want. We want the RF signal to appear between the cathode, the filament, and the grid. So that gets us our circuit there. Now, our audio feeds onto this plate, is amplified by the tube along with the RF that's coming in the input, and it goes through the primary of this RF transformer. Since this is an RF transformer, it has very low reactance at audio frequencies and high reactance at RF frequencies, like what we want. And the, the audio signal now travels to our speaker jack. Okay, the speaker connects there between B plus and there. That supplies B plus to the first two. We have a filter capacitor that um, is very high reactance for audio, but low reactance for radio frequency. So. The, the bottom end of the uh, transformer is effectively ground for, for the RF. Okay, that gives us our signal that we need to drive RF into the next stage. Okay, so that way we have radio frequency gain into the tune circuit, radio frequency gain into the output choke, and then we rectify it and we separate the audio from the RF, feed the audio back into the tube where it is amplified along with whatever RF signal is there. The, the, since the, the frequencies of the two signals are drastically different, the tube can amplify both of them independently. So long as we don't saturate the tube, it will amplify both frequencies independently. Okay, then that audio, we now have equivalent of three tubes. We have RF, RF, audio. So that's equivalent to three tubes. Feed it back through to the first tube where it gets amplified again. That's four tubes and then to our speaker. So by that clever little uh, feedback arrangement we're using the tubes first as our RF amplifiers and second as audio amplifiers. And by using reactances uh, correctly chosen we keep it from howling and, and feeding back and creating um, uh, uh, audio frequency oscillator out of the whole thing. Okay, and that's that's basically the circuit that we're going to going to use for our radio. Our filament uh, 
adjust. It's used for setting the volume of the whole thing. We just take it and by making the filaments brighter and dimmer we can set the gain of the tubes and therefore the volume. Alright, so now, well, we have to get busy and start wiring. This thing is, is a real mess the way it was. Um, I've gone ahead and stripped out most of the original wiring. Okay, the input is our antenna right here. Okay, that shows it going to our first coil. All right, we've got that going up and it goes to the input of this input coil. Okay, the output of the coil is connected to the lug, to the lug on the uh, mounting there. So that connects the top of the coil onto the capacitor. Okay, that's done. Now, the bottom of the coil, okay, that has to go to the bottom of the capacitor, and that's done by this connection here. I've got that connected to the rotor of the capacitor. All right, we've, we're going to hook the filament up. We've got to go from, okay, go from filament connection to the A plus, all right. Okay, now that gets our filament connections and filament connections all connected up. All right, we've got the filament connected in there with this one. Now we have to go from the rotor of this one to the um, transformer. We're going to hook this wire right here. All right, we'll go from here. We'll come up. And then we're going to go over that. Straighten this one out. Right. And we're just going to go over. Okay. There. And about there. Oh, that's going to be perfect. Okay. There. All right. Now, that. okay. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. That's enough condensers to do. <coughs> Just sound asleep. All right, now we need our 47K resistor. I'm going to use a nice old dog bone resistor for that. Okay, these uh, antique resistors. Let's see, 47K. 40K. This is going to be close right here. You use the body first, then the end color. And then the dot is the number of multipliers. So we have a four, zero, 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 zero. That's 40,000 ohms. Since it's old, it's going to read high. Okay, I'm going to go take the meter and see what we get. Okay, it's reading 50K. That's right what we want. Okay. Okay, we've got our new terminal put in here. Okay, now that is going to be for this connection right here. We're going to go from the choke, which is right here, to the terminal. And the 001. Okay, the terminal is going to be over here. Okay, so the plate is here. <clears throat> okay, 
So our terminal is right here. gets our connection to the B plus. Okay, that's all done. All right, now, so this transformer, the second transformer, is all wired. Now, that gets, that gets ground connected to the bottom of the 47K. That's right here. Okay, now we have to connect that one, that one, and that one together. Okay. Excellent. Okay, now this one goes over here. So that takes care of this one wire in here. Okay, now the next thing we have to do is get the other half of this going to the transformer up here. Okay, now that's going to be That takes care of this one. Okay, now we have one condenser here that we don't have in there yet. I'm sorry, this one. first one that takes care of this. Okay, so we've got that capacitor in there. Ground we've got taken care of. Okay, now that one takes care of this grid wire. Okay, the one we don't have taken care of, plate to the secondary. to get that terminal there over to here. Well, that was a nasty one, but it turned out very nice, okay? That's this one. Okay, we got this one here to do. One capacitor and to the jack. Alright. 
example, we have to do speaker to B plus. Okay. got those two done, that capacitor is all we have to do and we're done. Okay, that's going to go right in there. Okay, I'm going to just bend these down. Okay, there's our condenser. Okay, that takes care of everything. It's all wired. Okay, now we'll do a little cleanup on the bench and then we're going to shoot the juice to it. <coughs> okay, we got everything wired. I've got everything hooked up. Got the power supply connected to it. A couple of tubes put in it. And um, we're going to see if we can get anything to come out of it at all. Okay. Got power, we got 6 volts on there. We're getting about 0.19 amp. feedback there. Okay, first thing we'll do then, <clears throat> we'll connect a signal generator to it and see if we can just force a signal through it. Okay, okay, we're going to first go ahead right. I'm just going to That's the... All right, let's go back down. Okay, there's 700. Okay, we're very good on 700. Okay. Let's go up to 800. Okay, I can see on the second tuning condenser I can't get past 800. As a matter of fact, 750 is as high as it goes. So the, um, the coil on the second tuning condenser is completely wrong. Okay, we're going to have to pull turns off of that and adjust the tuning condensers to be right, I mean, the tube circuits. Okay. I've got to get to these turns on this coil. That means I've got to pull this covering off of here. Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this bottom part right here, and I'm going to see if I can pull turns off. Okay, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, I'm going to try ten turns and see how much we uh, raised it. Okay. Okay, now this is all hooked up, I'm tried, and it, it does not work at all. Um, that is regeneration. <clears throat> What's happening is when we turn the gain up on it, we're getting audio feedback through the circuit the attenuation of the 001 is not going to do the trick. Um, we have a uh, resonant circuit of these, this transformer here and at that frequency the amplitude is so high 
And if we do anything to go ahead and kill that amplitude, we kill the sensitivity. So this particular design is not going to work. What's going to have to be done is we'll try moving the audio feedback from this stage over to the first stage so that we don't have a direct feedback on the same two. Both of these potentially have that problem. Alright, we'll see what we have to do to accomplish that. Alright, I've redrawn the drawing here. What I've done is eliminated the feedback in the second stage. So we're going to make it equal to a three tube reflex radio. So we have, basically speaking, two RF stages. We have an, an RF and a detector actually. We have an RF stage to a detector that changes it to an audio frequency that's fed back into this transformer which feeds it to the first grid and then goes through the here to the speaker. That gives us amplification, amplification, feedback, amplification. So it's equal to three tubes. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and chop the radio and rewire it like this. Alright, got everything hooked up. Circuit completely changed over to the new circuit. We eliminated the feedback for the second stage. We're using it just as a street detector. detector. Then we take the output, feed it back to the first stage where it gets amplified and then goes to the speaker. Alright, let's see what happens. Whew. Or shouldn't have any gain at all. Or shouldn't have much gain. We need a, a power supply bypass condenser. Okay. That's using the short indoor antenna. Okay, that's about as good as it's going to do. It's not a high performance radio. It's only equal to a three tube radio. And um, it's just not going to be that high a performance. Okay, well, there it is. Okay, now we have to uh, finish off the box and put it in the box. Okay, all of our glue and filler is hardened so now what we're going to do is we're going to sand this box down get it ready to, to uh, stain Thank <laughs> you. 
looks very good. Okay. First, I'm just going to scrape off the remaining uh, lacquer here. This is the old stale lacquer. It's all crazy. I'm just taking a knife blade and uh, scraping it off. thinner. Okay, I'm just going to take the lacquer thinner and I'm going to wipe this down. It's just taking off the, the remainder of the uh, old uh, stain, old uh, varnish. out the whole box. That looks good. Okay, it looks very period. Very period. They used tannin back then. It's a, a uh, something left over from from uh, wood processing. This particular wood is not not very high quality wood. It's it's just pine, so um, we want to use a stain that hides the uh, wood. If it was a really decent wood, you know, like like mahogany or walnut or something, we would have you know done a, a lighter stain. But this is just cheap cheap junk wood. Doesn't have any grain to it or anything like that. It's just. Uh, it's, it, it's what they use to make apple crates and stuff like that out of, and cheap radio boxes. It, it's going to look good. It's, you know, it, it, it'll look good. Definitely not going to look bad. All right. Set that aside, and we'll let all of that dry for a couple of days. All right. Okay, this has been overnight. Now, this feels rough. This is what happens when you put the put the stain on. It tends to swell the wood up. So we're going to take steel wool and we're just going to go ahead and smooth off the wood. That makes it very smooth. Gets rid of that slight roughness that comes from the stain swelling up the wood.
Yeah, looks good. All right, it's been in there for an hour. I'm gonna go ahead and see whether it's uh, ready to remove. Let's see, a little steel wool here. Oh yeah. See how the rust is completely gone. Okay, I'm going to take this in and I'm going to wash it out in the sink. Actually, I don't want that going down my drain. I'm going to take it to the hose out in the backyard. I'll be right back. I got them all washed off. I'm just going to take them and uh, there's a little bit of roughness to them yet. I'm just going to take this steel wool and just go over the surface just to get all the, the remainder off of it. These were in pretty bad shape. but they're going to turn out very nice. Okay, I'm going to take them in and I'm going to scrub off in the sink and then we're going to let them dry. All right, we've got them all dried and pretty and now we'll just Okay, we just let those dry, then we'll... Alright, are you going to demonstrate the radio? You can demonstrate the radio. Here we've got it finished. Okay, we've got the uh, instructions right in the middle. And here's the radio itself. Very, very nice looking. Nice uh, box and everything. And that's what we get when we're done. Nice collectible radio.